We are surrounded by sound every day. From household sounds like dogs barking and people talking, to noise pollution from highways, industry, and planes, our days have gotten very noisy. NASA is working to reduce some of these unwanted noises. As a leader in aeronautics research, NASA is working to reduce the sounds produced by aircraft. The Low Boom Flight Demonstration, a NASA aeronautics mission, includes the design, building, and testing of the X-59 Quiet Supersonic Technology Aircraft, or X-59 Quest for short. The X-59 will be able to fly at supersonic speeds, faster than the speed of sound, without producing a loud sonic boom. But what is a sonic boom? A sonic boom is the thunder-like noise a person on the ground hears when an aircraft or other type of aerospace vehicle flies overhead faster than the speed of sound or supersonic. Picture an aircraft flying through the air. As the aircraft moves, it pushes air out of its way, continuously creating sound waves. These sound waves, or air pressure waves, move away from the aircraft in all directions at the speed of sound like ripples that form by dropping a pebble in a pond. By increasing the aircraft's speed to supersonic, or faster than the speed of sound, the air pressure waves begin to pile up ahead of the airplane and compress, forming shock waves. These are similar to waves that pile up in front of a boat as it moves through water. In the air, the shock waves will move out and away from the aircraft. This creates a sudden change in pressure. The change happens so quickly that when the energy from the shock wave reaches our ears, it's heard as a loud crack of a sonic boom. So how is NASA trying to quiet the sonic boom with the X-59? Let's find out from an X-59 NASA engineer. Well, the X-59 is designed to generate a quiet sonic boom when it flies supersonically. Traditional airplanes that fly supersonically, such as the Concorde or military jets, develop a very loud sonic boom as they fly over the ground. It's very disturbing to people on the ground, and that's a big impediment to being able to just fly commercially all the time supersonically. So this airplane is a demonstration of a capability that we think we've developed to be able to shape the airplane such that it will not generate that loud sonic boom. And so if you look at a picture of the airplane design, you'll see that unlike a normal airplane, it's very long and slender. And the reason for that is to be able to shape the volume distribution and the lift distribution over the airplane in such a way that the shocks don't all coalesce into a very strong front and rear shocks that make that loud sonic boom. The airplane is designed to fly at a higher altitude for a number of reasons, one of which is the distance away from the ground reduces the noise from the sonic booms. So higher, farther away, it would be quieter. The other is, of course, that the airplane is designed such that the lift distribution over the airplane is what we need at a given angle of attack. And the angle of attack is the wind angle going into the airplane, how it, how it touches the airplane. And so to get that angle correctly at the Mach number we want to fly at, put you up at 55,000 feet, mid-50s. So the biggest challenge historically has been just in the capability of being able to analyze how the airplane is going to act. We've recently developed the tools to be able to predict how the sonic boom will be produced on the airplane and to be able to trace that to features on the airplane. And then that allows us to design the airplane like you see in the picture of the long slender airplane that then develops the quiet sonic boom. Thank you for watching and don't forget to watch our next video about NASA's long history with supersonic flight.